so we're driving in the barrio and the barrio it's another word for ghetto or slum started back in 76 with the with the hurricane mm -hmm. uh, with the hurricane that came through and displaced a lot of people the government opened up the land and allowed the people to come in and build their own homes on small plots of land. It's been growing ever since and now we have a population of close to 30,000 people. Back in 1995, we started thinking about missions and going out and we came across the Dominican Republic and moved in to a tin roof shack we bought in the community. No running water, no power. We wanted to live with the people, like the people, in order to understand the plight and how we could serve best. Instead of us coming down and to make a difference in the community, the people in the community had to take care of us. We couldn't have made it without them. And so that's kind of where all our relationships started. Yeah, and those are foundational for everything else that happened afterwards. We didn't have this plan when we came down here. The ministry started happening out of necessity. The kids weren't getting educated. They were just running around in the streets, you know. And the parents work in sweatshop and most of the moms are single moms. Their kids were just left here to fend for themselves. These kids couldn't go to public school even if they wanted to because they have to have a birth certificate. So we got together with the community and the people in the community said, hey, this is what we need, a school. When I first heard that, I was like, a school? You gotta be kidding me. I don't even got a high school education. But you know, doors just started opening and we got some people volunteering and next thing you know, Tier School got started. Here, came here. The kids are so, so happy because they have the opportunity to make progress in their mind and change their futures. We've seen kids like four years old come into the school, seen them grow up, send them to university, and then we have several that have came back and are actually teachers at your school. So, so it's nice to be able to see full circle and it also makes me feel real old. I started when I was like uh, three years old, and I'm 17 now, so. Students have a good education. They have the things that the young people need. They have love for the young people, and we need that, we need love. And that's hard to find that here in the DR. Everybody in the community is really happy and excited about the school. She has three kids. All her kids go to tier school. Uh -huh. And she said, yep, now, now I'm, I'm so happy because I can go to work. <laughs> so ministry just kind of evolved out of the hearts and the desires of the people in the community. The people own all this stuff. They own tiers. We don't. Uh, there's a Dominican board now that runs tiers. All indigenous leaders. Everybody that's serving is from here, this community. It's sad when we have to turn kids away. One of the things that's going to happen when we build a new high school is it's going to open up space in this school. And then we'll bring a couple hundred kids from the barrio and they'll actually be studying here. You know, when I talk about it, I get excited. Let hope rise around here yeah, is what we're exactly. hoping to see. Cool. The most important thing is that people feel loved by God. They know God. We do that through education. We do it through water. We do it through justice programs. We do it through agriculture. We do it through soccer and baseball. Uh, those are all just different parts of how we share the gospel. Brad, I, I think I have a big connection with him because I, I can see his heart and he has a passion for the people. Rad is a big example. Tears is an acronym for true evangelism always requires sacrifice. Now, one of the first things that I feel like I learned when I came down here is I had it all twisted. And really, it's not all about sacrifice, it's all about love. And sacrifice is just a natural fruit of loving on people. If you love them, you're willing to give your life for them. So love has to be the root, and sacrifice is just the fruit. Leaders like these in marginalized communities are a light of hope around the world. They inspire me to add my light to the movement of marginalized people. Imagine if we all responded by adding our lights. I invite you to join me at Hope Mob, 
a community intent on resourcing change makers.